This is the Museum of the Earth in Ithaca, New York. It's the Public Natural History Museum of the Paleontological Research Institution, or PRI. It displays fossils and other specimens from around the world and allows visitors to explore the history of the Earth and its life. What most of these visitors may not realize is that, like most large natural history museums, the specimens on exhibit are only a tiny fraction of a much, much larger collection. It's stored behind the scenes, where the public doesn't usually go. PRI's Associate Director for Outreach, Dr. Rob Ross, gives us a tour. We're going into the area now where most of the collection is housed. This area has lots of special kinds of cabinets for uh, holding the fossils. These are more traditional cabinets, which have drawers that pull in and out like this. You may have seen something like this in a large library. It actually rolls on tracks. This particular brand is called Space Saver because that's exactly what it does. It allows us to fit more um, collections into a smaller space. The vast majority of PRI's collection is in vertebrates, animals without backbones. But there are also some vertebrates. We don't have huge vertebrate collections, but we have pretty good mastodon and mammoth collections from some of the local excavations. You can see some of them in these cabinets. Some are better preserved than others. This particular specimen is one of the, is the Shimong mastodon found near Watkins Glen. Uh, and you can see, for example, that the scapula here has been broken and weathered. This animal was not nearly as well preserved as the one from Hyde Park. The PRI collection contains more than 7 million specimens, making it one of the 10 largest in the United States. The collection began with the fossil collection of nearby Cornell University and has grown enormously over the decades since PRI was founded in 1932. I'm Warren Allman, I'm the director of the Paleontological Research Institution, and we're standing here in uh, what we call lower collections, the lower part of our, our collections wing, and this is where a large portion of the taxonomic or systematically arranged fossils are uh, in the institution. Uh, so what we try to do is physically arrange it so that a visitor or a student coming here to work can lay their hands on uh, what they're interested in. So we're standing here in an aisle that's devoted mostly to trilobites. And uh, let's take a look in just a representative drawer here. Uh, everything has at least one label. Many things have more than one label. Uh, you never throw away a label. So we have many specimens in here that have multiple labels. And that's very important uh, because the, in many cases these specimens have been part of several institutional collections. So we acquired them from another institution and maybe even that institution acquired them from an institution before that. Uh, so if you pick up a specimen here you'll notice uh, that this says Paleontological Museum, Cornell University. That of course doesn't exist anymore. Um, if we dig a little deeper into the box here, notice how fragile these are. Here's another label um, that says Paleontological Museum, and there might actually be different information uh, on the, in fact there is, there is different information on those two labels. And uh, so this one has more detailed locality information. So if we didn't have both of these labels, you might glance at these quickly and say, oh, they're the same thing. Well, they're not. So you won't never throw away a label. Uh, this is interesting. This is a this is a label from the USNM. That stands for United States National Museum. That's what's now called the National Museum of Natural History, part of the Smithsonian. Why do we have a specimen from the Smithsonian? I have no idea. <laughs> but uh, looking at the, the label and the, 
the state of it. That probably came to Cornell a hundred years ago, um, perhaps as an exchange. Museums do that a lot. Here is a label from the original collection purchased by Ezra Cornell, and you can see this says, uh, presented by the Honorable Ezra Cornell. When he started the university, he bought a fossil collection, which is pretty interesting in itself. But the story goes that he um, uh, bought it from this man named Ezekiel Jewett, who was a, a collector and kind of man of many talents. And the story is that Jewett had offered it to Yale for $7,500. Yale didn't have $7,500, so uh, Jewett raised the price to 10000 and Ezra Cornell bought it. And that was the beginning of Cornell's both teaching and research fossil collection, of which PRI is really kind of the direct descendant. The collection is a library of specimens, assembled as a resource and available to scientists who investigate questions about evolution, climate change, biodiversity, and geological history. So this is the most valuable part of our collection, um, and that's because these are what are called type and figured specimens. So the rules of biology require you, when you describe a new species of an organism, to designate at least one specimen as the name-bearing specimen, and those are called type specimens. And because uh, PRI has been publishing its own journal since 1895, we have a lot of specimens, uh, the pictures and descriptions of which were published in that journal. And so what you see here in this bank of cabinets, uh, and beautifully arranged in each drawer, is this set of literally unique specimens which, by definition, are irreplaceable. They are the reference set. They are the, the bearers of the names. And the only reason that's special is because of the, the nomenclatural system that we use in biology to keep track of, of biological diversity. So if somebody 100 years from now wants to check on this description of these particular animals, uh, these are fossil gastropods, if somebody wants to check on this and say, well, do I agree or disagree with that, that description, then they are required to check that original specimen. So one of the most important roles, one of the most important things that a museum collection does is to be the repository, in principle, the permanent repository for these specimens. And you'll see that these are organized very, very carefully in the order in which they are, they, the illustrations of these appear in the publication. So this is really, this is the most detailed kind of curation you can have for a, for a fossil collection like this so that we can lay our hands on literally every single specimen, uh, the figure of which has been published in our journal. Hi, my name is Leslie Skabinski. I'm the collection manager. I take care of the collection here. So this is how you used to catalog things. You put them, actually hand wrote them into big ledgers. And this says Cornell University Paleontological Collections. And it's in gold print here with uh, the actual specimen numbers. If you can see, maybe. Mm -hmm. Let's open one up and see some beautiful handwriting too. This is actually the museum number that we would uh, give to the, to the specimen. If it had come from some other collection, that would be what the original number was, or somebody's field number. Um, this is the corrected name. Now, we don't really do that much anymore. In some ways, we do. Uh, this is the name that it may have been um, given by the collector. Uh, the number of specimens, the horizon, and then if they collected them from a station. So some people go back to places again and again, and they give them special numbers. So that would be a station number. This is the actual locality. Mm -hmm. and how they obtained it, so whether they traded it, they bought it, they got it in exchange, they dug it, and then uh, just remarks about it. Usually who they came from, um, maybe, oh, who knows? It's like ID'd by Gilbert D. Harris, GD, oh, GDH. I bet that was Gilbert Harris right there. Yep. Like most major natural history collections, the PRI collection continues to grow as new specimens are added, sometimes through new fieldwork, 
but frequently also from other colleges and universities that no longer can or wish to keep them. The PRI specimen collection is an enormous and unique resource for teaching, learning, and adding to scientific knowledge about the history of the Earth and its life.